Once upon a time, once upon a time, Tommy opened a door. This is all a three-year-old needs to be drawn in, G.K. Chesterton claims. A very young child's imagination is so strong, he doesn't need much of a story to be engaged. But as we get older, we require more details. For example, a seven-year-old needs to hear, once upon a time, Tommy opened a door and saw a fire-breathing dragon. The younger we are, the less we need in order to be captivated. Our imaginations were stronger when we were children. Storytellers and poets have long known that imagination touches something deeper than our thoughts. The phrase, God loves you as you are, not as you should be, is consoling and true, but it just doesn't reach us in the same way as a story that begins, a certain man had two sons. We read that in Luke 15 and 11. This study will require you to use your imagination because union with Christ is an enchanted reality and we live in a disenchanted world. But before you set this study aside as something for created types or someone not like you, because you're a serious person, give us just a moment to talk about this word imagination. Because as much as we prize it as adults, we often clip its wings. We hear the word imagination and we think it's about fiction or fairy tales. It's a child's nonsense. It's about things not real. Hence our phrase, oh, that's just your imagination. But in this study, we're using the word in a larger, more human sense. We're talking about the imagination in regard to its ability to capture those things that aren't seen. Imagination is that distinctly human capacity by which we image anything and everything that is not immediately visible to our eyes. Uh, for example, think about this thought. When did you last set down your keys? What would you like to have for dinner tonight? What color are your mother's eyes? This uh, requires imagination unless you're looking right at her. Whether you're aware of it or not, you use your imagination all the time. Imagination is an integral part of science. Um, Isaac Newton saw an apple fall from a tree, as many had before him, but he used his imagination to discover the fact of gravity and in any invisible force Anything conceptual requires us to use our imaginations to engage with and understand it. This might explain why Albert Einstein said, Imagination is more important than knowledge. More than merely seeing what is unreal or fantastic, imagination is also used to imagine anything that is real but not visible. Most important, imagination is necessary to know and enjoy God. How else can we relate to the true true God that 1 Timothy 16, 6, 16 says, uh, the true God whom nobody has ever seen or can see? How else but by using our God-given imaging capacities, our imaginations? We must use our imaginations if we want to fully inhabit and experience the Christian life. Now, if language like, like this makes you uncomfortable or nervous, please notice that the Bible, from beginning to end, calls to our imagination. When Moses tells the people, uh, when he's leading them out of Egypt, it is because of what the Lord did for you when you came up out of Egypt, in Exodus 13, 8. When he says this, he is calling them to use their imagination, to put themselves in the Exodus story and to make it their own. When we hear that story and we put ourselves in the sandals of the people who are been, being led out of Egypt in the Old Testament, we have to use our imagination. When you read a parable of Jesus and try to tease out what it might mean for you, you are using your imagination. When the New Testament writers ask us, set your minds on things that are above, it's not a command to crane our neck upwards at the skies, but to look at a reality beyond what we can naturally see. When the writers tell us, fix your eyes on Jesus, fix your eyes on what is unseen, actually, it says in 2 Corinthians 
It is our imagination that must respond in order to do that. Or take the most frequent biblical command given to God's people, the command, remember. Uh, for example, to do this in remembrance of me. You can't remember Christ. You can't remember the crucifixion. You can't remember what he has done for you unless you engage your imagination. And think about that tragic refrain in the Bible where God says that his people forgot. In Judges 3, 7, for example, the people forgot what God had done for them. They didn't remember. Uh, this can be diagnosed as a, a failure to call to mind, a failure of the imagination. Now, in this study, we're going to excavate a forgotten treasure. That forgotten treasure is the reality of the Christian's union with Christ. Now, why would something so valuable be forgotten? Why would something so valuable need to be excavated in the first place? Well, later on in the study, uh, we'll offer several suggestions as to why, on the whole, we have lost our union with Christ as a controlling lens for how we think about the gospel and salvation. But here, at this moment, we'll offer just one. The biblical scholar Walter Brueggemann claims the key pathology of our time, which seduces us all, is the reduction of the imagination so that we're too numbed, too satiated, or too satisfied, and co-opted to do serious imaginative work. I think he might be right. And if Chesterton is right as well, and you are older than three, highly likely if you're listening to this video, then your imagination is already somewhat diminished, or at least very out of shape. One way to think about the Christian life, not the only way, but a powerful and too little used way, is that believing the gospel means having your imagination taken captive and reshaped by a new story so that you see yourself with a new identity. And so, perhaps, this is a child's business. At least in part, that's what Jesus meant when he said, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So, let's become as a little child. Allow yourself to imagine those things that are real, but yet aren't seen. Allow yourself to do the imaginative work that builds mature faith and helps us to rest on the reality that we have as Christians, our union with Christ.